Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for watching. Today on Station Rigs, we're at Walnut Port, PA. We're looking at Diamond Fire Company, and they have a very special rig. Let's take a look. Today we're going to be talking to their chief, Chief Mike Wentz. Uh, he's going to tell us all about this truck. Thank you for inviting us out, Chief. Oh, thanks for coming, Mike. So. Greatly appreciate it. This is a huge truck. Uh, so what is this truck, first so of all? So this is actually uh, an urban interface pumper. Okay, what does that mean? So an urban interface pumper means this truck really, it's a pumper, so it can do dwelling and structure fires. It can kind of go off road. Uh, this particular truck is four wheel drive and it actually has a special pump and roll capabilities. Okay, what do you mean pump and roll? So basically we can drive the truck and on the front of the truck, we have a front turret that we can drive forward. We can pump and throw water. We can throw class A foam or class B foam. So kind of like a brush truck. A brush truck or uh, in the sense of an airport crash truck. Okay, or you know, typically when we talk about engines, you have to put it in pump gear. You have to actually put it in neutral, put the pump gear in, and that takes it out of drive. Yes. This is, you're saying I can drive and spray water. We can, so this has a main 1500 gallon per minute pump, has 500 gallons of water, has an A and B foam cell, which has a foam system, but it also has a 250 gallon per minute, uh, it's a pump and roll, it's a PTO pump, so which, it's not the main pump, it's a separate pump that we can engage it separately and drive the truck, uh, whether it be driving in two wheel drive or driving in four wheel drive. Okay. And we can drive and pump and roll either water or one of the two foams. All right, how about we take a look inside the cab? Absolutely. Tell me what you got. So basically here with the oper we have the operators, uh, the seat. So of course the driver is gonna drive. Uh, we have all the controls for putting in pump gear, engaging the generator, uh, the controls for both the main pump and the PTO pump, and also uh, we have uh, the remote control. You can see it there. The the joystick will uh, you can drive and and work the the turret, or you can use the main pump and bring bring that out of the cradle and sit out here, and you can work the tur turret and use it uh, for the main pump. Okay. And do regular fire. So fire. you have the MDC. That's your county MDCs, and you use 800 megahertz radios. What kind of radios? Our radios, our radios, we have two different radios. So we have a VHF and a UHF because we operate on a couple different counties here. So uh, one county is VHF, another another county or two are UHF. And then the uh, the laptops is basically uh, connected to the county. So we uh, use a, a crew force is what it is. So we get we get a lot of uh, communications and everything through awesome, the county awesome. that way. You're using MSA packs. How many people do you see? We're using here? MSA packs. So we have uh, the officer in the front with a pack and uh, three in the back. Back. Okay. I love the fact that you have the uh, Firecom radio systems to talk to each other. Yep. Keeps our hearing down. You know, I've been doing this a long time. I got a 2% hearing loss from those sirens. Excellent safety feature to have. Firecom and all of our apparatus. Yeah, that's it awesome. makes a big difference. Okay. Tell me about this. So basically here is, is your, your fire pump. So this is a, a hail, it's a hail Q-Max pump. Uh, it's a 1500 gallon per minute pump. Down here is, is the, this is the, the mastermind for the, the pump and this is all the controls for the foam system. So we have a 20 gallon class A and a 20 gallon class B foam system. Okay. And that actually works with not only the turret in the front, it'll work with, uh, we have a 150 foot pre-connect in the front bumper and we have two 200 foot pre-connects here and those can all go live with foam at any time. Wow, that's absolutely phenomenal. And I love the fact that it's all color coordinated for each of the regulators across the board. Is that also coordinated to the hoses? It is, correct. So, and actually you'll see, you'll see the hose Blue, green, we have blue and green. The front line is red. Uh, we have two out, the two lines out the back. We have a yellow, a two and a half with a solid bore nozzle, which you'll see when we go back there. And then we have a, a, a 10 uh, or brown, and the hose is actually 10. Okay. And they go out the back. Man, this is easy to work with. So, all right, what do you have in your cabinets? Okay, the first cabinet here, and the door swings opposite. So okay. that way, th this is the engineer's cabinet. So the gentleman who's running the the, the pump panel doesn't have to walk around the door. He can come right in and, and get in here. So basically anything that we need for, uh, for if we're doing a draft or suction strainers, any of our extra adapters, uh, spare nozzles and some uh, LDH adapters are all basically right here in this. So cabinet. all your appliances are here. What I really liked, and this is the first time I've ever seen this, you labeled every uh, shelf. You also we have labeled each of the units. 
We do. Why do you do that? So we found over the years, it makes matters easier for an emergency situation, with, especially if someone mutual aid looking for something or even our, our, our uh, firefighters, uh, where something is to teach them over time or to something's missing. Well, geez, where does the nozzle go? Well, you know, the nozzles are here. And basically when you see all this, uh, it gives them the different, the different sizes of one inch to inch and a half or- As you pick that two. up, I noticed that it's also mounted in there. It's not just sitting, it, no. I don't know if you can see this on film, but if you look at this, it just like it's sitting in here, but it's not, that's actually mounted in Every, there. Everything in all our apparatus is, is mounted. Wow, that's absolutely beautiful. So you know exactly what's either missing or yes. what you need and what to use. Absolutely. All right, what do you got in the next cabinet? So the next cabinet here is, is the tools. So we have some basic forcible entry tools. We have our, a vent saw and spare fuel, uh, some various toolboxes with some hand tools, yeah. uh, bat our battery tools. We have a, a Milwaukee battery toolkit a hydro ram. Uh, so basically this is a little bit of uh, operations, you know, of your basic hand tools and some forcible entry right. and, and uh, ventilation. Again, you have it all labeled, very easy to come in, but you also have seals on different things and actually what's in this. Right. Is so, that something that's normal or that's something that well, you guys do? Well, it's something, it's something we, st we started doing. So all of our, all of our bags, uh, we, we make these tags up, uh, what it is and everything that's in there. And that way, again, it's accountability that you can say, Hey, something's missing. Well, then did we let it, did we let it at a call or where is it? So everything's marked and in there and the seals. So all our toolboxes and you'll see all our medical bags, uh, it, everything gets gone through. There's an inventory list, everything's in there, it's clean, it's taken care of, but when it's back in there, it gets sealed. And now when we go through and do our, our monthly truck checks, we don't have to look, hey, those are sealed. Right, you know, everything's right. proper. Yeah, truck checks is probably one of the biggest things that we do, whether I'm on the ambulance or the fire truck. And there's many times you go in and you're going, okay, what is supposed to be here compared to what last shift did? Correct. Having a label like that and having it sealed makes it real nice and easy. Makes matters, especially for training new members. It, right. it really helps. Right. What's in these little things? So right? here, the, these are they actually these are normally SCBA uh, bottle storage and uh, cylinder storage. We don't want to say bottle yeah. storage. <laughs> so on, on the other side, we have a, a bottle. Uh, excuse me, a cylinder so, for each air pack. And I, I I get used old school, you know. <laughs> And uh, so the, it's there for each air pack. But over here, we decided that we use this for fire extinguisher. So we have a, uh, an ABC, we have a pressurized water, we have a CO2, and we have two collapsible uh, Indian backpacks right. that we decided to stick them in here to save space and use them. So when you got this set up, did you guys do this or did this come from the factory this way? No, we actually, there, there's, a, there's a company uh, near us that does all kinds of engraving and makes labels for like office buildings and desk plates. So I, I went to them some years ago and asked them if they could do this and they basically said, yeah, absolutely. So we laid everything out, gave them everything, they did it, and then it was a matter of putting everything on and every so often you change something uh you know you got to call and order a new one but they do all uh, the work for us here uh our gear rack plates uh as you you've seen in another video that they they do all that for us and they're they're local to, to our area love that absolutely beautiful what we have in this cabinet so basically this cabinet here is uh our hazard control so we have some we have spill material we have some absorbents we have a high-rise pack uh, cribbing, if, if this truck would get uh, be second due on an accident, if we have to stabilize another vehicle. So that would be right. in here and uh, we keep a, a right. 50 foot roll it, of Yeah, it looks like, I mean, you even have the socks or the booms and the dry mat, because you have a waterway in your coverage area. We do, several. So you got to make sure that those things are protected. So back here, I love the mascot that you guys have. Yeah, that's something that we did. We started that in 1996 when we got our rescue engine and, you know, we put, we put it on, they picked the Tasmanian devil and it, it's, it's great for the kids. We do go do fire prevention. It kind of attracts the kids to the truck and every you know. fire station should have some kind of mascot. Absolutely. So I noticed the, um, chevrons that you have on the back of the truck, they're yellow and blue. Is that required by the state? Well, NFPA requires it for the, the, the apparatus. There has to be a, in the front and the back so much for NFPA standard. And normally you'll see the lime and you'll see the red. We opted to, to go with the, the blue and some of the trucks you'll take notice where it is diamond plate in the back. We have the little, the little squares. Okay. So, but all of our, all the apparatus and, and you'll see most apparatus will have the, the, the what well, we got way up top. <clears throat> so up top, we have uh, the suction hose for when we have to do draft and we have a Stokes basket and in the Stokes basket, we have a uh, backboard. Okay. Okay. And underneath this tarp, I assume is all your hose. All our hose. So there's a, uh, we have a 200 uh, foot, two and a half pre-connect with a solid bore nozzle, a 200 foot inch and three quarter, 
and we have 600 feet of three inch and 1200 feet of five inch supply. Oh, wow, wow. Underneath the pull -up, roll up door? Yep, underneath here. So we have, again, a, we have a portable pump. Uh, we have a portable hydrant that we can we can lay uh, from the fire to the water source, and there's there's it's a manifold that you can attach uh, various size lines. Uh, we have extra foam, so we have 10 gallons of extra class A foam, 10 gallons of extra class B foam. Uh, our hydrant bag, which is our adapters in there, for when we lay the hydrant, if we have to use a, a two and a half or the the four and a half, so everything's in there. And basically, electronic flares and uh, collapsible traffic cones. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. Again, looking at this, it's very organized. I love the fact that it's so organized that even if I, you know, you know I'm a volunteer here, maybe I come out for my Wednesday trainings, but I only can make maybe a call every other day or every other week or whatever. I know exactly what's supposed to be in exactly. that truck. It makes it very easy for me exactly. as a volunteer to work at a place like this. And an emergency situation is sometimes, you know, seconds count. And this basically just helps with a lot of that. Okay. If I wanted to volunteer for your company, how would I do that? Do I, is there an application process? Do I need to go online or where can I go? You to can do go that? online. Uh, you can call and leave a message or stop. Like we drill every Wednesday night. We start at 630. They come in. We have an application packet. Uh, I'll, I'll interview the person, give them the packet. They'll fill everything out. Uh, once all the checks and everything come back and, and the, the person is, is good, then they'll have an interview process with all the line officers. Okay. And then we'll, we'll start going from there in the process. Of What's your website? Uh, it's www.wallaportfire.org. All right. So if you guys are in the area, you're interested, do us a favor, hit them up. You know, come volunteer. They always can use the help. Absolutely. Let's keep taking a look around. Oh, we got another cabinet up we got top. Another cabinet there. So this is our this is our extension ladder, a folding ladder, and a roof ladder, and some various uh, pike poles and hooks. Okay. Okay. And you got some stairs to get up there because some of the shorter people may not be able to get that eye. We we do, <laughs> and some of our taller people have trouble too. <laughs> So now we're on the passenger side. This yep. is the rear compartment. Rear compartment. So basically we have our, our exhaust fans, our PPV fans, a portable generator, and, and some lighting. Right. Now exhaust fans, they smoke ejectors, people call them, all kinds of different things. Yep. Yeah, and portable lighting. I saw the lighting on the back too. We forgot to mention that. So the tripod lighting. Yep. No, so here, here are the, the opposite side. This is exactly the same okay. for our, our MSA air cylinders. Okay. So we have four air packs and we have four spare cylinders. Right, and right from the outside, that's a label I know exactly. exactly. So we'll open this one up and you are exactly right. So this is, uh, we have some uh, rope, uh, rope rescue equipment, some various lengths of ropes, salvage covers and floor runners, our, our EMS. So we have our AED in here, jump bag, oxygen, and a backboard kit. And uh, this we have on every truck. Uh, in this box, we have blankets, we have towels, drinking water, and we keep fire wipes. Wow, and again, even for your EMS gear, you have all these little tags, you know, for your AED, you got your tags going on. It's amazing how much time and effort you guys actually put into getting this set up. But once it's set up, it makes it easy to check it. It is, and it's and it's everybody. And like now, if you want to, if if you uh, are on a mutual aid call and you're mutual aid and you come and uh, basically I tell you I want a uh, three by eighteen floor runner, and you can come here and like right here, here's a three by eighteen floor runner, and you could say, oh, right here it is. Here, there's a label and it's marked, yeah. so you can grab that off the truck and you can look and say, oh, here it is, grab it off the truck. I would encourage pretty much every department do something like this. It may take you a little time in the beginning, but it's gonna pay dividends in the end. It does. So we got another cabinet here? Yes, we do. This is, a, this is our tool cabinet. So in here is basically our shovels, uh, brooms, rakes, uh, some extra forcible entry. We have some extra axes, halogen bar, uh, a trash bucket. Uh, any of the longer tools, uh, everything's mounted in here. Wow. I, I, Mounting them like that versus just throwing them in a cabinet is, a, is an awesome way to do that. It keeps them from knocking around, getting broken, and stuff like that. So uh, as we make our way around, this is obviously the other side of the pump. So this is intake or you can do an outlet also here, right? right? So we have, this is our, our large discharge for our, there's a, a five inch discharge, a two and a half discharge, our suction. Uh, we have a blitz fire mounted, some pony sections of hose, and of course the opposite side of the of the hose bed. Right, right. Now I'm, you know, five foot ten, five foot eleven. I stand up to this truck. This is a huge truck. That's it because is. it's four wheel drive. Because it's four wheel drive. Wow, this is absolutely huge. But how hard is it to drive? You drive it quite a bit, right? 
Well, I, but occasionally, <laughs> occasionally. So, you know, it, it makes me feel intimidating to drive a truck this large, but you go through an extensive driver's training program. We do. So if you want to be a driver, uh, you, first of all, you have to have uh, EVOC. Uh, for the engine here in particular, you have to have the uh, pumps, state certified pumps one, state certified pumps two, and then 16 hours of in-house driver training. And then one of the line officers, particularly one of the chiefs, uh, will then clear you on the truck before you become certified. So it is, it is extensive, but for obvious reasons. Right, right. Now up front, you got a little bit more business going on. We do. This we is do. the thing I've never seen on a pumper. Well, I've seen it on brush trucks. It, absolutely. So, you know, you normally you'll see on the other trucks, you'll see a deck gun that's mounted up top. So when we built this truck, uh, we, we knew we wanted to make sure there's front suction on, which what which this is. And of course your front pre-connects, which are both here. We have a one inch and an inch and three quarter, but we thought the other two apparatus we have in station have the monitor up on the top. So we wanted to do something different. So we had put this down here and being it was an interface truck and we could do pump and roll, we had set it up that that way we could actually go in, we could pump and roll water, or as I said before, to class A or class B foam. So with having all our malls and, and vehicle fires, or even just right across the river from us, we have an, air, we have an airport, uh, it, it comes into play. That's awesome. Got the old Federal Q. Got to have the Federal Q <laughs> siren. Every, every, tr every truck in the station has the Q siren. All right. It's not a fire truck unless it has a Q. <laughs> So remind me, what year is this truck? Who made this is, it? This is a, a KME. It's an, on an it's international chass, chassis. It is a KME and it's a 2010. Okay. And what's the, the you call it a urban it's interface? Urban truck? interface pumper. Wow. This is cool. We've never seen this before. Thank you for showing us. You are Thank uh, you. Mike Wentz, fire chief at Diamond Fire Company here. This is Heroes Next Door doing a station rakes. Thank you all for watching. Do us a favor. Hit that subscribe. Hit that notification. Hit that like button. It keeps building us. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next week.